Um, and what I should have said to you this morning, of course, was hola bon dia, to the bain. Yeah, hola bon dia. So how's it gone? You're back again for more um, Portuguese tuition. We've been working behind the scenes here, chatting to each other. I have been encouraging my friends and colleagues here to share with you their favorite Portuguese phrases, favorite Portuguese words, so we can move you along a little bit further. The idea being uh, to get you past uh, that first psychological barrier where people think, I never, I'm never going to get this, or I'm just so embarrassed in the public Portuguese situations. We'd love to get you to a point where you feel comfortable going into a cafe or public situation and just rocking a, an hola bon dia to the bain and being able to get past that first bit. So is that okay with you? Oh, absolutely. I think it's, um, you do stop yourself because you don't think you're good enough. Oh. But you've just got to, you've just got to do it. The reason I gave out that slightly patronising or it was not because I was being patronising, I promise you. It, I mean, but that's life generally, isn't it? That's why I was it slightly is. touched by that. It is. We and that, it's ourselves. because I, I, I think I mentioned it before, I've started taking golf lessons on and off for the past like two years, really. But because it's been on and off, I've just sort of had a few lessons here or there and never felt sort of good enough. And then last week I went along to something and someone said, let's do a couple of holes and I thought oh, mm, first time on the golf course and you know nowhere near close to, to to be able to do that and actually I didn't do too bad I really surprised myself I mean there were some terrible shots and I've lost a few balls but we won't talk about that but again it's psychologically you do stop yourself and I think you can yeah you can apply this to this as well so true so true I mean that is a horrible moment for anyone who's experienced it uh, stepping up to, to the first tee and there being a little crowd of people and you're not exactly warmed up at that point are you and you're as you as you try and remember all you've been taught or thought was a useful a bit of tuition uh, or experience in golf and you swing the club and you top it and the ball just rolls off the <laughs> first tee onto the first bit of the fairway and okay. you have that little walk of shame don't you to go and get, <laughs> to go and smack and it again like, i'll try i'll try again <laughs> And, and the crowd the crowd backs up and gets bigger and bigger or so yeah. it feels around you so there it is i mean th this is general advice then um you know in terms of building confidence we do censor and limit ourselves don't we and the wonderful thing is i think we said last time you were here is portuguese people will be very supportive and and encouraging uh, unlike people at golf clubs perhaps who are booing maybe, and and, and saying and british golf clubs i didn't think we allowed women on the golf course on the wednesday <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know I, I snuck in um but no it's interesting when we were talking with with some Portuguese like Nuno and stuff like that that you know they were sort of saying that because I think one of the things more than anything is really the pronunciation that I mean let alone remembering but that is I feel personally that's my biggest biggest barrier not my not my uh, forte or strong point but he said you know they're just happy for people to to really give it a try regardless yes absolutely absolutely so do 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 bear that in mind um james is already in with some advice for you um sarah bon dia queria that that's a really useful that's worth writing down because i know you were writing things down last time weren't you queria i, I would like i'll write that it, down yeah this is where james started he, and he's had his moments at the market you know when he's saying queria um some tomatoes asking for tomatoes can get you in all sorts of trouble here in portugal um and he knows that he's got the scars to prove it Keria, i would like is a magic key into the world of asking for things and so here we go he's elaborating on that for you Keria on pal de mafra <laughs> whether or not you want a pal de mafra <laughs> in this in this illustration you're going to be getting one uh, compido fatiado oh that's good por favor i would like a mafra bread a particular place a regional bread Long and sliced, please. So, compido uh, would be the long bit and fatiado. That's a useful, because they have these uh, slicing machines here in Portugal. I don't know. I've not seen them so much in the UK. They all slice, or you can slice that in Lidl when you get your bread there. So, that's fantastic. Um, we, we may take screenshots as well. Uh, learn. Look, you see what Pete's done here. Uh, learn your days of the week and numbers, which Carl can take mm. you through. No, Peter. Uh, you can type those out for us on the screen um, or anyone can do that. If anyone wants to test themselves, I'm happy to help with that as well. Um, I'm using Keria. This will be, might be a little bit uh, 
more useful to you first thing in the morning there's there's the how you asked for your first cup of coffee of the day oh yes do you want to give that a try okay you, can you say it first <laughs> Get young cup, get young cup, so in a in a phrase book or when you're learning on an app or a video um what this is this this goes back to the pronunciation and and i think the the, the earlier difficulty you mentioned mm -hmm. so in a in a phrase book or an instructional video or here now for that matter uh, we would enunciate it slowly and clearly, and it would be "Kirion cafe, por favor." And if I was doing, if I was doing a voiceover, I'm open for those sort of jobs, producers, audio producers. If you're listening, um, learn Portuguese with Carl Munson, and it would be "Kirion cafe, por favor." Repeat after me: "Kirion cafe, por favor," or "Faz favor." And see, the thing is, when you go to the cafe and you stand next to a Portuguese person, per person, person saying that. It's going to come out as un café, <laughs> probably. <laughs> a lot faster as in Kenyan café, fast forward. Um, so th I, I do feel your pain with that. However, this is the place to start. And James is bang on there. So, Korea, 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 un café, por favor. Korea, un café, por favor. Excellent. Yes. <laughs> oh, the spotlight is on you. So, good on you. And thank you for being in this position here. The pressure is on others as well to, to keep coming forward with and testing their knowledge such that they can share with you. The this thing way. is, I, I suppose that's it. You'd be not, you know, not to be disrespectful, but you probably become unpolite because I'd probably be just saying un café, par favor. And that's OK. A bit out. Yeah, the career is it, I, I think James does put that very well. Career does begin a world of uh, engagement. You know, I would like. Uh, I would like Keria. So you, that that's it, it's almost like an anchoring or um, stabilizing word. You know, you just say, okay, what's that first word I need to remember? Mm -hmm. Keria. It's the it's the the, the path mm -hmm. into these situations. So excellent, James. Good. Oh, not Keria. <laughs> Hold on a minute. What's he saying? Translate. Okay, and this is the pitfall of translator apps. Translator apps only use goshtar to like as in I would like. So and so he's not saying don't use Keri. He's absolutely saying use Keri, but not Goshtar. Because actually, I think if you stand at the bar saying, I like coffee, the people behind the bar are going to just nod and go, OK. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for letting me okay. know. <laughs> <laughs> so Keri rather than Goshtar. Although uh, I suppose they, they notice that you're from the UK or you're American, then they probably think, yeah, they're trying. They <laughs> they're are trying, things. very trying. Absolutely, absolutely right. And that goes back to the, the warm reception you're likely to get from Portuguese people. So brilliant. Thank you, James, for that. Uh, before we go back to more, I think we should have a look at uh, the world of currency, shouldn't we? We, see, we could easily forget whilst we're in the hurly-burly of learning Portuguese. You are, of course, from Spartan FX. How's it looking? I mean, political turbulence in the United States, for sure. Germany in recession, I think, officially. Yes, what's going yes. on? In the, what's going on in the exciting world of currency, Sarah? And then we'll come well, back. Well, that's, to what that's the same thing. I mean, you you sort of nailed it on head on the head what you what you just said. People forget about it, and that's part of the problem. Is people and and understandably so. You know, you forget about it. It's not high on your list, and and it is a human nature often to leave things the last minute. And currency is one of those. I mean, the number of times people sort of really basically come to us and say, "I need money. I need to transfer it yesterday." pretty much yeah, we need to ideally. get there as quickly as possible um and you know really i would advise that people do give themselves more time because the more time you have the more options you have but also just make sure that you can meet those deadlines i mean we are very quick with our transfers in fact quicker than the bank i mean we've had customers that it's taken a week for a transfer when they've done it through their bank so especially if you need to meet any deadlines or if you encounter any problems, I mean, we've had clients that have had deadlines and they've missed them because they've done it through their bank, for example. Um, and we just don't want that because it, it could be an extra cost for you, extra hassle, depending on what you're buying. You know, they might not be lenient if you've got a deadline. So, again, we can make the transfers faster. Um, you know, we, we do do same day transfers. But again, you just don't want to be in a position where, you know you're struggling to meet those deadlines so do bear it in mind and also the rate does fluctuate don't forget that you know we've got customers that are often buying euros in advance or just let us monitor the rate for you you rightly said you know when we're looking at sort of customers that are selling us dollars and buying euros there really is sort of 
your peaks and troughs, troughs. I mean, the general trend is moving against you, but within that, we're seeing a few flickers of improvement. So if we look back this year, we saw better rates, I think it was about the 6th of March and then 4th of June, you know, it is starting to move against you again, but there are some hope within that. And that's what we're sort of looking for to try and take advantage of the rate for you, because on sort of larger amounts, a small shift could be $2,000 difference, but a bigger shift of, over a few months, we've seen a difference on 250,000 euros, about 32,000 US dollars. And that's a lot of money. Yeah. What could you do with that money, essentially? Could you buy a two, car? Two grand a lot as well, isn't it? Yeah, you can buy, buy a lot of long sliced bread for two grand, let Definitely. alone 32 grand. Incredible. Definitely. And um, happy customer, James. Extremely happy member of the spa. He talks, he's calling you a family rather than a company. Yeah, I, it I, is. It's lovely. Company. Yeah, friends, family. It's really nice to hear that. But I think it's because we do take the time with our customers. You can speak to us whenever you want to. Um, and I think that really makes a difference because it is stressful. You know, you've got a lot on your plate. There's a lot to consider. And we just want to make this process as easy and simple for you as possible. Um, you know, a couple of things, obviously dealing with your bank, often it's, you know, the paperwork that you need to fill in to make that transfer. We can help you fill that paperwork in. We can try and help make that interaction with your bank a little bit easier as well. So it isn't always, necessarily about the rate i mean recently we've had customers well they've come about over time but say to us oh i've spoken to my bank and they say they'll do it for free now nothing's free i mean there are some things but generally <laughs> not a lot unfortunately free and certainly not when it comes to your bank so yeah they might not be charging you a bank transfer fee which is might be about 45 dollars but what exchange rate are they offering you so you may find yeah oh it's free i've not been charged at 45 uh, us dollars but actually on a few hundred thousands it's costing me about ten thousand uh, dollars to make that transfer because that's actually their charge within the exchange rate so yeah. when they say it's free yes it's free for a bank transfer but they're still making money on the exchange rate and that's what you're you're not seeing and they're not really really telling you so that will be a much costly transfer so it's something to to bear in mind. That's really where we come in. That you know, yes, you you may still encounter a forty five dollar bank fee, but we're saving you a lot more money on that exchange and helping you get that money quicker because of the way that we send payments. Mm -hmm. Very good, excellent stuff. So there you go. Uh, with the, the link is in the chat as well, and James clearly happy there. So if you could pass on that Ola to Neil as well. Um, when you speak to uh, the team, that'd be great. If anyone else wants to say hi to their um, nominated member of the Spartan FX team this morning, you'll feel, please feel free to do so in the chat. Um, great stuff. Okay. And on your website, of course, people can find out rates too, can't they, on your homepage. Um, thanks, Sarah, for that little insight into what you do. Um, some general advice then. Let's go back to the Portuguese and teaching you a few more phrases for when you're back over here. Are, are you confirmed and booked for, for more time in Portugal yet? Yes, I'm coming out on Friday just for a very Aye. short trip. So I'm very okay. excited about that. Um, yes. Just a short, short um, trip, but then I'm going to come out later in the year for a little bit longer. So I'm very excited about that. Very good. And have you chosen particular towns or venues? Are there places you're, or, or are you confined to, to the big cities basically because of what you do? No. So generally, I'm, I'm, I based myself in, in Lisbon just because it's a lot easier because a lot of which you'll find yourself, you know, your visa agents, your lawyers, a lot of them tend to be based in, in Lisbon. So mm. that kind of makes sense from that perspective. Um, yeah. But I might be making a trip further out of town now um, to Tamar. So Very I'm excited. Um, I've never been before. Apparently, um, very historical. Um, apparently, it's the home of the Knights Templar, I believe. You, look at you. You are not only Portuguese language, but Portuguese culture. You're absolutely right. And you will have a great time, I think, in Tamar. Most people do. And it's, it is a charming and beautiful and historic place. Yeah, really good. Have a great time in Tamar. OK, so let's give you a bit more vocab and a few more things to bear in mind when you make that trip over here to Portugal. Um, never drink, apparently. And that, sorry, it's not never drink, full stop, but never drink and drive. Uh, but as an accompaniment to after dinner coffee. Oh, that's the I think that's the really strong liqueur Pete's talking about. Uh, the other tip is drink that strong alcohol when you are keeping going through a Portuguese class. I mean, if you think this is tough, 
just a few minutes. There are people who go to Portuguese lessons twice a week, I think, the, doing the uh, government course. And it's three hours, I think, twice a week. Um, they do pay you. And I think that's only right, given the um, <laughs> given that. Expensive time. Yeah. Uh, but you, uh, the, the, Victoria's picking up on that advice. Yes, uh, going to smuggle some into my class tonight in a Pedrash bottle. Pedrash, of course, is um, the water, one of the waters here. Oh, that's a nice little quirk that you might um, like to know about, Sarah. Do you, do you, I mean, presumably you, you, you have an occasional glass of wine or gin and tonic or port and tonic here in, hold on, I need to shout at my dog. Okay, he's gone now. He's scratching to try and come in. He wants to go for his walk, bless him. But you're going to have to wait until I finish speaking to Sarah. Um, yeah, no, I do have some wine. I do like um, the green wine from Portugal. The Vigna Verde, we were talking yeah. about. That. Yeah. And uh, the white port that I discovered. In Very Europe. good. Very nice. You are becoming so Portuguese, Sarah. Yes. Now, <laughs> if occasionally you're going to be drinking water, you're going to be asking for... So we go back to the Keria. Um, Keria... Um, garafa d'agua con gaz. So, uh, have you come across that yet? Water is a very useful word to know, obviously. Agua, yes, yes, and it's with well, that was it. it was interesting. Someone asked me, Do I want water? What was it? Um, oh, I can't remember now, but it sounded very strange. And I thought they were talking about fresh water, as in from the tap, yes, or do I want it normal. But what fresh it was cold Let's go or normal yes, yes that's another beautiful that insight that you're right doing that. here we drink tap water so I, when he said fresh i thought oh tap water or normal but it's not they say that for cold or out of the fridge very very good so fresca or normal normal will be room temperature fresca would be from the fridge very good excellent stuff now the other thing that might throw you as you're making some nice progress here asking for your water with some confidence and you might uh, get to the point where you've got the fresca. It's not a simple matter ordering water in Portugal. You've got the fresca or the normal, but you've also got sangash or congash. And, and there's a lot in this because congash means with, and we've got that pronunciation note in there. It will be C-O-M as it's, as it's written, but you would say it as though it were written C-O-N, con. So congash would be with, with gas. And saying again, S E M Sangaj without water, it sounds like it should be S E N, but it's written S E M. So it's going to, you're going to be asked, and it's not over there at that point. I think there could be at least three questions about the kind of water you want uh, room temperature or cold, with or without gas. And when you've got to the point where you want it with gas, there's going to be more questions, which is where this Pedrash word comes in. Pedrash means stone or stones. Um, but that's a brand of water. So you might get to a point where you're thinking, yay, I've, I'm acing this. I've done the cold room temperature thing. I've done with gas. And now the person behind the counter is saying, Castillo, Castillo, Pedras, Lusa. And they're firing all these words at you, which are actually brand names of waters. Because Portuguese people's uh, water palette is really sophisticated they will choose and specify which brand of bottled fizzy water they want. So be stand by for that. And the beautiful thing, of course, is, so, you know, those um, words will also be vocab for you. Pedro Stone, Castillo Castle. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, anybody, and I may well be with some of these things, so I'm happy to be put right in the chat. But just in the, in the small interaction of asking for some water is that richness of pronunciation, vocabulary, mm -hmm. and all sorts going on there. So... Good stuff. What about ice? Do they put ice in? I've not noticed that ice in water. Yeah, gelo. Oh. We, we, we had um, somebody asking for limao gelo earlier on. Very good. And I like where you're going with this because that could come up with the gin and tonic, portonico thing, couldn't mm -hmm. it? Generally served with it. So that limao is lemon. Another brilliant um, pronunciation note there. Uh, uh, so you might look at that. Uh, uh, and go limawo um, on the end of the word, but that is a useful, a, and again, a useful pronunciation tip because it's not the ending of only limao. There are other words that have that al al sound that's through the through the hooter. I don't know if you would like to try that limao. Limao. Very good. Yes. Limao. And but how is it spelt on the end? Sorry. 
Uh, you've got L I M A O. Limon. And there's a little there's a little squiggly on top of the A to, so that you know that uh, you've got that sound. I think it's going to be the same for the Beran behind me on the shelf. I have a bottle of Portuguese liquor on the shelf behind me. Beran with that same ah sound at the end there. I'm feeling quite self-conscious now because here I am in this situation where I'm being a Portuguese teacher and this is not <laughs> <laughs> I am a I am a pretender. But it's true what we were saying earlier on. You know, you learn by teaching. And I'm really feeling that now. It's like I'm checking, is that how it's spelled? Is that how it's said? But it's great. It's it's re a really good position to be in, and I thank you for it. So there you go. Um, James helping. Limau, lemon, and lima, lime, if you're going to prefer that with your mojito, um, for example. See how I'm contextualizing it all, mainly with alcohol, it seems, this morning. So sorry, I don't mean to create a bad impression of you, um, but it's it's my go-to. Right? I'm not suggesting it's yours necessarily. So, But you see the little squiggly on the A, um, Limal. I don't know what the official word is for the squiggly. Somebody will tell us that. But there you go, Limal. And you asked about uh, ice gelo, G-E-L-O. So you might say, queria limal y gelo. I'd like some lemon and ice with that. I love it that you're actually writing this down. This is fantastic. You can also oh, watch again. You. I'm you can writing watch, them watch down the in a um, different way to how they're spelled because that'll be easier for me to read it as you should possibly say it. Yes, exactly. Exactly. So a bit of phonetic um, note taking as well. Oh, and there are other people who want to say hi to the Spartan team. Hola to Ben and Neil. Yeah. <laughs> Great chaps. Also a happy customer. Um, says Joao de Nort. So a few more things before you have to leave us and go back into the world of currency exchange proper. Um, Keria means from uh, Victoria, uh, I wanted, but it is correct. You can also say quiero, uh, I want. So you'll, you'll notice that words ending in O can often be the first person conjugation of a word. Um, I know there. So I want would be quiero, but quería is, is the way to ask for things, is a way and a very accepted and known way. Podzer is one I like to use, uh, P-O-D-E hyphen S-E-R, Podzer. So it's like, is it possible? Almost like the American, can I get Podzer? But let's not confuse that right now. Let's stick with Keria until we see you again. Are you up for a third lesson at some point? I am. I tell you what, I will say that, because we asked, didn't we, some of the experts, um, what would their tip or their saying be yeah and i think nunu shared which i thought was useful um casa de banho casa de banho casa de banho yeah now it, it's very interesting that you 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 kind of truncated together as casa because that's what you hear when yes. people say well, that's why know. i wrote it like that because that's how he, how he said yeah. it casa de banho so it's the it's the room of the bath the bathroom um casa being again a, a useful bit of uh, vocabulary because it because it's multiple uses but casa de baño in this instance asking for the wc the little boys or girls from us and other euphemisms for that room but casa de baño is good and you could just say you know rather than a lot of conjugation and, and grammar uh, casa de baño fash favor fash favor por favor is always going to go a long way and um james with another excellent uh, intervention here always in capital letters begin with a friendly greeting and I, I i i have noticed this you might want to just cut to the chase and ask for the coffee but it's important to go in with the, the with the greeting of the right time of day which of course we did last time bon dia bon tal, bon noit, and then hola so very important to establish the greeting first and then ask for what you want that's i mean there's a sense of politeness about that isn't there to sort of first of all say hi and then ask for what you want. So there you go. Great. Excellent, James. I appreciate that. And on that matter, Suze is saying, um, is making eye contact culturally important when greeting with Bondia? I don't know about culturally, but I just would say that's a good thing to do, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. and in, yeah, an intense stare, not so much, but uh, casual eye contact is good as well. Uh, it's not a staring competition. Um, I know it is in France with a bonjour and, and perhaps a handshake too, or two kisses, or three in France. Uh, perhaps there. so thank you for that Suze uh, that question um, James saying Sarah I just realized you might not know me from my handle here any variation of slug is me James Holly 
Ah, <laughs> okay. Um, and we also have another one. There's the Mont Chic when you're in the Algarve, as well as the Castillo, um, Pedras, Lusa, and Mont Chic. The Mont Chic is a fantastic water. It is the it is the exceptional one that is alkaline, uh, with its health benefits of being an alkaline water. Darren, um, in Porto, he's he's at a similar stage to you, I think. And they don't understand Coke Zero in a Yorkshire accent. Can you imagine? All right, lad. Coke Zero. Faz favor. Um, <laughs> I can understand that, Darren. Come on, drink full fat anyway. Mm. Never mind about that zero rubbish. Um, I, went to, I went to the No Wi-Fi Cafe close to the house with a letter of introduction and the Canadian apology for not speaking Portuguese. Ah, oh, she carries a letter with her. A man read it aloud to the regulars, got smiles and a bottle of vino. <laughs> There's an incentive then to carry around a letter of apology and interruption, uh, an introduction. Uh, they're very good. Uh, gelado is ice cream, not gelato. Um, thank you for that. So, jello is ice, gelado is ice cream, gelato, of mm. course, I think is the Italian word, but that's a good word to know, isn't it? Gelado, nice bit well, of especially with this weather. Okay. Yep, yeah. and is this another water? Victoria, the tilde, I'm not sure what that means there, but it is one minute past 10, Sarah. We better not keep you uh, from the world of currency exchange and FX. Um, is, but is there anything, you, uh, a final observation? I, I know I've made a note to get you a game of golf with Bobby O'Reilly at Arroera. Um, that's, that will be, uh, do, you, do you fancy playing golf in, um, in Portugal? Yes, why not? I've got to push yeah. myself. And yeah. that's what I decided from last week. I've just got to do it regardless of how bad I am. So I apologise that if I take hours to go around the course, but I'll give it a go. Yeah. Oh, and look at this. Um, I, um, I, I, I have to make a correction here. Uh, casa is, of course, house, not room. Um, I'm, I'm thinking of quartos and uh, or like a sal de baño. Is it? Is there? Is it also referred to as the bathroom? So forgive me. Casa is house, not room casa de baño the house of the bath the bath house there so thank you very much for that uh, correction they're very happy to be corrected and learn something myself this morning so thank you very much james yeah golf then you could do the double sarah uh, you could play golf whilst speaking portuguese at some point so we'll see if we can <laughs> well you you know the the, the the when pete was talking about days of the week and numbers the key number for golf of course is going to be cuatro as you shout, so as the ball goes off in the wrong direction and you need to shout for. <laughs> so you can be shouting cuatro down the fairway. Good job. Let's not overload you. I'll keep it no, simple. I'll no, no, that's back. fine. But I think Please ultimately from the world of currency, you're right that, you know, we've seen Germany go into recession. Um, the U US had bounced back a little bit from sort of the economic crisis we saw earlier with the banking crisis. Um, but ultimately... There are obviously still issues going on for both. Um, the in the eurozone, they're going to increase um, interest rates very aggressively and follow suit like what the Fed did last year. So, in the longer term, you know we may see more euro strength, um, and it's just a case of us keeping an eye on that rate for you, so that if there is any movement in your favour, we can let you know. But equally, on the other side of things, it may be worthwhile looking at buying euros in advance because yes, you might be watching out for a better rates. But if that doesn't come, there's a case of actually buying it now could be a good time. You could be getting it at a good rate for your future payments, for example. So it's just helping you. That's our job. We're doing it all the time, monitoring that rate and helping you really manage your budgets, because that's going to be one of your biggest issues is that you've got lots of things. You're paying for a NIF, paying for your visa, maybe renting or buying yes. a property, sending savings, buying a car. There's lots of things that you're moving money for. Um, and the rate that you're calculating at the moment could be very different from when you need to make that exchange. So, again, it's just helping you manage those budgets, really. Thank you. Thank you for that. And, um, yeah, so make your call. Get in touch with Spartan. Uh, say hi to the team. couple more things. I believe it's four in golf, not the number, but in, in front four. So it'll be friend in Portuguese, just to guess. Thank you for that. I wonder what golfers do shout. We will find out in due course. Pardon the pun. Um, tilde is the squiggle over the A that denotes the nasal pronunciation. So that's what that is. The Ooh. tilde is over there on the limel. Fantastic team effort, everybody, this morning. Really appreciate that. Have a great day, Sarah. We're going to be talking about um, whether or not uh, in the next segment 
um, this idea that uh, the only thing Americans truly fear is inconvenience. So I'm going to have a chat about that with everybody on the IBN FM phone in. Um, until then, take care and bye for now, Sarah. And we'll see you again soon. See, see you again. Ciao, ciao. Bye for now.